Posey Gloves here, and this is sort of just a spitball, a spitball, spitball video on multiband compression. We're going to go over the basics of it, and, but we're going to be covering a lot of ground here. So buckle up your seatbelts. First, let's talk about multiband. Now, there's a huge number of things that I could go into, like so many that I, I've actually attempted to do this video a couple times and gone off on weird tangents. So things I will be avoiding. I will be avoiding dynamic equalization. You will hear people say dynamic EQ and multiband compressors are the same things. They are wrong, but they are right. It is a complicated topic and it's mostly due to the ideas and philosophies. If you're going to use, if you're deciding to do multiband compression, you want to know which one to use, a dynamic equalizer will accomplish the same thing a compressor will, but in a different manner, causing you to think about things differently. So I'm not going off on that tangent. So a whole nother video something else i expect you to know what compression is i expect you to know what gating is and i expect you to know what expansion is downward expanders upward expanders and and those things so i have a video on compression if you're unsure what that is so now let's move into this i will cover things as i go but let's just really quick talk first i want to give you an example this was a requested video just for the basics so I want to give you an example of why multiband anything would matter to you. Because that's really the first question we should be asking. When someone asks, what is multiband compression? First, you should say, well, let's talk about what multiband is first. Multiband, you have a spectrum, right? And it's got all this stuff in it. You've got some highs, some lows, mids. Let's say you're recording a drum kit and your kick player just doesn't hit that kick very hard. It doesn't hit the snares hard, which is like not what drummers do. But let's say they're just hammering on the cymbals and the hi-hats. They're like going ham there. So the highs are gonna have way more information than the lows and mids. So if you wanna process it, you probably don't wanna generate too much compression or reverb or anything really for the highs if they're already pretty loud what you want to get at is the mids and lows because that's where the stuff you want to change is so what you're going to do is you're going to multi-band it you're going to take these frequencies you can split them up using crossovers you should know about this from sound and synth basics and I think it's video 12 where I talk about bandwidth. And what you'll do, I don't know why I had to draw the bands. And what you'll do is you'll take the lows and the mids and you'll process them separately so that when, but it'll still be one whole. When you put all the bands back together, you will get the whole signal. And so that's what multi, that's why multi band compression matters. First, first I want to show you just a nifty sort of trick to get a kick to sit. So let's just say you have X kick. This is a good kick. So let's just put down four beats of a kick. So I'm going to use the magic of multiband compression with the combination of sort of amplitude remapping. I'm going to be using Maximus. I've tried covering other plugins here. I'm just going to do crap that is in some cases unique to Maximus. I'm sorry. It's just one of the it's Maximus is completely, utterly, ridiculously powerful in some ways than other compressors are or ever will be in when they're modeling old plugins. So it's just, or old hardware units. So I'm sorry for that. But if, if this, most of these principles will be useful to you and I will show you like multi-band compression, what you'll see how to do that on any plugin that offers it. You'll understand some of the parameters you're messing with. So basically what I'm about to do right now is I'm gonna make this kick sort of my dream kick. I'm gonna make it a bigger kick. Now, I have headroom and I'm gonna eat that up right now. And some people do not like that because objectively it screws with everything. So I'm sorry for you people who don't like the obscurity of objection, but it's kind of what it, I'm gonna use right now it, as an expander. So I'm deliberately going to make it louder. So first, uh, if I were to just make the highs, let's just say that right now, this is a single band compressor, meaning if I had one compressor, I would send it and I would send all my audio through this compressor. Well, now as I compress things, my entire signal is going to get compressed. And so if I were to expand it, my entire signal would be expanded according to all the content that's in there. So if the highs have a moment, the whole signal gets expanded. If the highs have, if the low has a moment, the whole signal goes up. It doesn't matter what part of the signal is active. So if my highs are quiet, but my lows are loud, my whole signal is going to be affected. Doesn't care. And multiband, each individual piece would be considered on its own. So I could do things in a lot more of a surgical, dynamic manner, making things Oh, dynamic, that was a pun. Uh, making things more even. So 
let's uh, let's come over here. So if I if I most people what they like to do is they like to increase the sustain. So you know they'll do this. You see the sustain goes up big time. We definitely have a lot more hang time right here. Now I do have a lot of a boost and it would be interesting to do. It's essentially also going to let me act as a transient master, but that's another topic that I'm not going into. So, so that's a thing. So you get a kick that sounds like this. Just memorize what this kick sounds like. And that's great, but there's, and it sounds really big and beefy, but what happens is, is that amount of punch also contains a lot of frequencies that get sustained over, not necessarily where I want them to be, to be sustained over. And what happens is, instead of being the kick I dreamed of in my mix, it eats up headroom and I end up having to duck a lot of other pieces of my mix. I end up having to change the kick. I, you just go through all this weird stuff trying to fix it. So this is what I like to do. I will come to my lows. I will increase the lows because that's where I want my sustain. So, oh, and I've just turned this off. So let's turn these. So you can turn the bands on and off. You could set where your bands are frequency wise and pretty much any multiband compressor that is like a serious compressor, they'll let you do this. Unless it's modeling a hardware unit that would automatically do stuff like this for you, which is sort of some of the magic of the analog stuff. So anyways, I'm, we're doing digital specific stuff. So what I'm going to do, I just feel like closing my eyes right now. I just need to close my eyes. Okay. I don't know why. I just felt like I had to close my eyes. So I'm going to turn up my expander. That was a weird moment. And as you see, my sustain increases, but only on my lows. Now this kick, this kick doesn't benefit as much as I thought it would from this. But that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty, that's pretty much where I want it. Now the, it's little, you hear that little so that's kind of wimpy. So I want to beef that up too, but instead I'm going to use this. Now this, what this is, is amplitude remapping. Go watch my fruity wave shaper video. If you're curious about how this works, cause it's essentially a wave shaper, but it also acts as a threshold input. You'll see this on lots of compressors as well. Norm, some of them do not let you draw in on the graph like this does here. Well, this, this is called the spline graph. It's, it's a fancy name for reasons that don't even matter to you. It's just a fun fact. Um, it does matter to you, but it's like a mathematical perspective allowing you to draw all sorts of different curves that normally wouldn't be possible. So again, we're not gonna, yeah. Anyways, sorry about that. Got a little mathy. What, it wasn't even that mathematical. What this allows me to do is say I have, let's say negative 18 decibels. Well, Hey, I could set a point right at negative 18 decibels and I can uh, decrease it by some ratio. So right here, so let's say at negative 18 decibels, I want, uh, so as the input comes in, the output, I'm sorry, I've been reading this backwards. So this is the input. So in, audio will come in this way, and then I'm affecting it based on the vertical unit up or down. So back it up. As audio comes in negative 18 here, so this is negative 18 on the, on the vertical axis. If I turn it down, you'll see nothing will get out. But as soon as I pass the threshold of negative 18, a little bit will get out, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, until the point where if it was as loud as it could be, there would be no difference. So this should be very, very familiar because you know what compression is. But that's how this graph works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a threshold. I'm going to boost it so you get that. And then I'm going to do it one more time. And you can actually see where you're make that linear. I'm going to look at this. The mids are always, mids are very important. So yeah, it's important that you also put it where the audio is. You may consider turning up your pre so that this affects it more. Now here it has very interesting implications. So yeah, so in this case, it's a much tighter kick, as you can see. It's got sort of this downward slope, but you also you also have the knowledge of what's going on inside your kick, all the different frequencies. So that's a little bit of multiband. Now let's talk about, let's do a drum loop real quick. And let's talk about some of the principles here. I'm not going to go into details. I've tried. It just becomes a mess. So anyways, amplitude remapping, something that's interesting. Let's talk about this amplitude before we get to the drum loop. What, what this, what, why, why do you do that? You know, people are going to wonder, why do I put a point there and then boost only the top half? Like why? And the reason is in, so let's, let's break out FL wave shape, fruity wave shaper. So that's pretty much all this plugin does. That's its job. It's a distortion unit. You, there are lots of other plugins that do this as well. There's a free one. It's called X for records. It's called, um, 
8 bit this or something like that. I don't remember what it's called. Anyways, it's on my free plugin list. If you look it up, it's a wave shaper. And I thought, I think I have it on my list, but I can't remember what it's called. A 8 bit shaper. That is what it's called. So it's, it won't work quite the same way because they use a different graph technology. It's not a spline graph. So I guess it is kind of relevant. But, uh, anyways, what this allows you to do is an amplitude remap. And they don't show you the things on the side. In the old one, they did. There's got to be a view setting somewhere that, that shows you. But anyways, I'm not going to deal with it right now. Anyways, just know that there, it's, it works on the same principle as this. So when stuff comes in here, down here, down here in this low end, that's going to be frequency specific. You saw, let's, let's pull out, let me show you what I'm talking about. A lot of this stuff just requires a lot of sort of inside knowledge about general sound stuff. So... Here we go. We got a cool sort of thing going on here. Let's send that through a track and drop a Maximus on it. And we're just going to use Maximus to look at it spectrally. So I didn't even change the bands. Just on average, this is what the bands, this is the default setting. So it's usually pretty darn close. So here I've got a, so here's our master band. So, oh, it's even got compression. It's a little too loud. That's not good. I am running it through an expander at the end too, so it's deceptively louder than it actually is. Not a good thing to have on during a dynamics showdown. So, we play it. There we go. That's our signal, right? Now, if we were to, so that's that's our all our frequencies, everything when they're summed together and they are presented as one signal. That's what we got. Now, if we look at the highs. They're actually not as loud as the entire signal the whole time. So that means some other parts of the audio peak. Oh, it looks like that. It's the lows. The lows are responsible for the combination right here. I mean, the mids. <laughs> the mids. And so we so we take this knowledge. We're like, oh, oh, oh. So what does this mean? This means that, oh, and look at this. The lows, the lows are there a little bit, but they're not quite as loud. They also contribute to the peak right here. So you can see this is like the max where everything sort of adds up the most and it gets let down. So you can see sort of how it gets built up into that thing. Now, what this means is, is when we're looking at our fancy dancy stuff, I'll just blow up this plugin. What's coming in here, even though this is our low band, like we're on our low band right now, that means that these are the quieter low band frequencies. And if you're really smart and you think about it, you can sort of guess which frequencies are the quieter ones in a signal. It's sort of this weird deal. So on the... That, if you understand that concept, all of a sudden the fruity wave shaper becomes like a weapon for all sorts of distortion types. But anyways, so that's, that's my philosophy for why I put a band here. Not philosophy, that's why I do it. Is I am letting some of the frequencies, the majority of them that are soft, stay soft. And then the ones that are loud, the ones that are attributed mostly to the timbral side of why we perceive that sound as the sound that it is, I enhance those. And as a result, we gain punch. There's a whole bunch of other things we could do to change the way we perceive a sound and make it sound darker or not, or brighter, or all these different things without affecting it through EQ, just through compressors. So it's really, really, really a dynamic tool. Now, I have not, I've still not gotten to compression um i have simply so as you can see there this is why one of the reasons why multiband compression sort of this black magic topic in those ways so that's multiband that's a lot of things you can do with multiband you've seen some of the powers let's talk about a little bit of the compression so if i play it we have our signal coming through and what you can do now it should be very obvious now let's say that like you want your lows to be brought up well you can go you can say hey low frequencies i'm going to place a threshold and we can see where our frequencies come in if i blow it up it'll be maybe easier to see so you see there they are that's when our low frequencies show up they're not even there for part of the sound so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say frequencies that are that low get compressed when they reach that threshold, we're gonna do it a lot, right? We're just gonna be really aggressive, like super aggressive. So you see, we have that amount of compression. It's basically almost a brick wall. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn it up in post. So I can independently affect my highs from my lows. And so I can make dramatic timbre changes and pretty much make EQ moves as well. But what's different is I'm affecting a range of frequencies in a way that they would not have been affected before. Because sometimes these frequencies go below this threshold and then they're unaffected. So 
that's that. Now, that's the same thing that a dynamic EQ does. So a lot of people would just say, why don't you just use a dynamic EQ? And in those cases, you know you're kind of white. But you know what you can't do with a dynamic EQ? You can't do this. Whoops, I got a little excited. This, you cannot do that. Now, you can't do this with a multiband compressor either. But you see, you get all sorts of weird stuff. So, did I mute something? Oops, I did. That's not necessarily something you want to do. They'll, it won't even reach this side. It's not nearly loud enough. But if we turned up our pre. <laughs> so anyways, that's like the fun of multiband, though. That's why I was making such a big deal about it. Something that's kind of nifty with Maximus is you can turn the compressors off, but you can keep the multibands. And so you can continue to split your signal in all sorts of interesting ways. Um... Or you, no, 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 I said that wrong. You can't turn them off and keep the multibands, but you can just make them linear. So this is a this is a limiter right now, in case you didn't know, because it's a brick wall, won't let it go past zero. So you just make it a linear relationship and then drop them on different channel strips, put up a bunch of, EQ, of reverbs or something and make your own multiband reverb plugin. Like whatever you want to do. The important thing is if you split your signal, you're going to want something that's got good crossover filters. What do you, what do you talk about crossover filters? So that's another thing about multiband compressors that's sort of a thing. So if we turn this off, there's another one they have in here under dynamics. It's called the Fruity Multiband Compressor. And if we turn the speed all the way down, you will see the crossovers. These crossovers introduce phase shifts. If I were to do this with TDR Nova, so let's say I wanted to make my own, right? Well, I could theoretically do a whole bunch of high pass and low pass things and make my own selections and then try and cross them over so they accurately sound and replicate the original signal. What would be tough though is the more dB cutoff you get, the greater the phase shift is on a signal. So when signal comes in, this, this, what's happening right here actually changes the phases. Why does the phase shift down here matter? Well, that changes how frequencies all the way up through the rest of your signal sum relative to that frequency. So if there was a peak at one point and suddenly now it's at zero, all the boosts that went down, you're going to change the timbral content down the line. So you do not want that because at first it's not that noticeable, but as you do things, it becomes more and more noticeable, especially the poorer the crossovers and the more that there are. So you want to be aware of stuff like that. So things like the fruity multiband compressor can be excellent ways of doing that. And again, you can just take this, drop multiple instances across like a bunch of tracks, mute some of the bands. You see you can mute them. So you can mute certain ones and then you could affect it with regular plugins that only process single bands like the Wave Shaper. You could put multiple Wave Shapers on there and make your own Maximus if you really wanted to, I suppose. I mean, that'd be sort of an interesting deal. You'd be missing a lot of the functions and features that Maximus offers um, otherwise, like the, the various attack the case is same, but if you put in a uh, your own compressors, but then you wouldn't have the the graph. So Maximus is would be a pretty tough thing to redo. But you can see you you gain a ton more flexibility than you had before. So yeah, that's the basics of multiband compression. I don't really have anything else to say on this. Now let's uh I guess I will delve into it real quick here because I don't want to get into too weird stuff. But if you've never heard of this before, this stuff can be like way changing. TDR Nova is a free plugin. It's available. Um, on their website. I'm going to their default. Why won't their default? Let's go there. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm just going to reload it. So anyways, I have a video on it is basically what I wanted to say. And you can go check it out and get the plugin for free. And the default wants to load up all sorts of weird for me. So I'm just going to send this to a new track. Load up another one. Okay. What is a dynamic equalizer? So this is a dynamic equalizer. It functions the same way as a compressor. Now we know that compressors, when something passes a threshold, the dynamic range changes. It will either turn it down slower. So as it, it will get louder, but it will get louder fast, slower with the compressor. It will get louder slower. If it's an expander, it will get louder faster after it passes a threshold. This can actually, if you buy the Gentleman's Edition, you can have the expander. It will also expand. So really, really cool. It's not able to do the whole splitting the frequencies, which is why I made such a big deal about it at the beginning. But I kind of explained it in a way I think this is actually probably my best attempt at why multiband should be considered separate and powerful for its own reasons. 
Now this, this you'll see right now is very, very, very intuitive. So let's say that like you have a problem with like 5k and maybe you have a vocalist that has a really bad lisp around like maybe 6.5k. They have some sibilance. They're like, they're just doing all sorts of madness. So what you can do is you can make it so you can put a compressor there. So you, you position, let's say band four right over 6.5k or right around there, 6.6, .6, whatever, close enough. It's right here. We can type it in 6.5. And then you say, I want there to be a threshold. When audio passes this threshold that we've set at negative 13 decibels, we want the frequencies to be attenuated. Why is this better than just a regular EQ? And then you can set your ratio. So you're essentially setting a multiband compressor of sorts, but it's a dynamic equalizer because it doesn't use multibands in the same way. So you can see the EQ is automatically turning on and off according to that. It's sort of like really, really crazy automation. That's pretty much what it is. If you had a little automated guy who is specifically controlling that band, that's what you could do. Now, this is very powerful rather than just a general cut because those frequencies are important. When they don't go below that frequency, you don't want them to be cut. But what I'm saying is if you put down an EQ and you just apply to cut there, like bang, it would actually be way up here on this EQ. It's a little... It's a little misleading. Uh, but anyways, you put a cut there. This cut will cut all the frequencies. So you'll turn down the general dynamic range as a whole. And so that's not a good thing. What you want to do is you want to turn it down just when they pass that because they're important for other sounds and timbres. And if they've been cut, they may sound dull or lacking. So a dynamic EQ is very powerful. You could use it as a de -esser, like I just showed you in this example. Now I'm using a shelf filter. You may want to use a peaking, which you can totally do. And so you may use a peaking filter and maybe we'll turn that one off. So you can see now it's a peaking filter and you can change the cue and everything, which is one of the really nifty things. Really get specific here. And so it's a very, very powerful plugin. You can also use the EQ function in the, in the dynamic equalization in the same plug, which is, uh, I believe most dynamic EQs can do that anyway. So I guess that's not that crazy, but, uh, <laughs> but this play, I've, I was so floored that this is free. I'm totally, I'm still floored that this is free. Um, so yeah, you can come through here. You can do that. You can do it over here so you can turn it on. So you see, it's also sort of, it's multi-band as well. However, it is a different sort of philosophy. Like you can't split bands quite the same way I was showing you over there. So, well, excuse me. If you have any questions about this, let me know. I hope I answered a lot of questions you have or have had or maybe gave you some useful information. That kick thing, man, I use that in all sorts of percussive loops. Like you can get way big punch out of that. If you have Maximus, uh, otherwise you could combine the tools and create something similar still. Interested, uh, you might consider getting a wave shaper of some sort. I know Melda Audio, they have a, a free one that functions almost exactly like um, wave uh, fruity wave shapers. So you could create a very, very cool, similar thing to Maximus. Is it called Wavefold? M Wave Shaper, there you go. And as you can see, you have like your plug. And it, the key commands are a little bit different. They have this option too, which I find kind of cool. So you could create really, you create curves in that method. So it's sort of an interesting deal. So, yeah, so you can set that up, do some interesting things. So if you have any questions about this, let me know. Support me on Patreon because you know that you want to subscribe and have a blessed day. Those little sparkles at moments. So essentially, so that's the sound. And it was made completely in citrus, no external, nothing. And ideally, you'll take it, you'll find a moment in it that you like, and you'll use that moment.